So I'm gonna show you how to turn a piano into a synth. Here's a piano loop that I made. And here's what it sounds like if I just add one plug-in to the piano and bring the rest of the beat back in. Now this plugin might look familiar to some of you. That's because it's the third version of ShaperBox called ShaperBox 3 that just came out. I've gotten to mess around with it for the past week or two and it's kind of insane how much you can do with it. But I found my favorite thing to do has been to turn organic sounds like that piano into a crazy synth-like sound that you have complete control over. It's kind of like a sampler, but not really. It's kind of like a synth but not really. It's hard to put into just one category. What makes it unique is all the effects you see here in the plugin are time-based. So you can change any of these effects over time. But even better than that is that you can trigger each of these effects using MIDI notes or even audio now, which basically allows you to turn any sound into a synth. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start at the beginning. So we've got our piano loop here. The first thing I'm gonna do is go down and change the output of this piano track to no output. Then I'm gonna start up a new instrument track. This is where you would usually pick out a synth like Serum or Vital. But in this case, I'm gonna go down to MIDI controlled effects, then I'm gonna pick Shaper Box 3. Now if I hit play, there's still not gonna be any sound. All I have to do to change that is go in the sidechain window up here and select the piano. So now the piano is playing through this plugin, and the reason for setting all this up is now I can use MIDI notes to trigger any effect I want in this plugin. So I'm gonna go into the track, right click, hit create MIDI region, and draw in the rhythm of the chords. Now back in the plugin, let's start with a simple filter. I'm gonna change the length to an eighth note down here, and I'm gonna change the mode to MIDI mode. Now I'll just draw in a simple filter shape. So I've literally turned the piano into a synth where I have full control over the filter. And not only do I have full control over the filter, but I can trigger all these other effects too. If I was making a synth sound, I would wanna add some extra noise to it. So we can do that here too. So I'll do the same thing. I'll make it an eighth note in length. And I'll change it to MIDI mode. Now I'm actually gonna take the other wave we already made and just copy it over to this noise section. So that's just a basic white noise sound, but I have all these other noises to choose from, which is even more than like Serum or Vital give you. I'm gonna go with the synthetic rain sound. Then I'll take it off noise only mode and I'll just mix it in with that piano signal. And I can keep adjusting the shape of this noise however I want. Like if I wanted to make it a little more plucky just to add some attack to this piano sound. And you can choose where each effect goes in the signal chain. So I'm gonna drag the noise before the filter. Let's add in some distortion too. So I'll select this drive effect. And instead of having the distortion play the whole time, let's do the same thing where we select the length and put it in MIDI mode. And then I'm just gonna make it a little pluck so it just adds a little distortion to the attack of the piano at the beginning of every chord. That's a cool effect that really just helps the beginning of each chord cut through the mix. So that all sounds nice, but it's a little boring. There's one way we can take this to the next level. And the way we're gonna do this is to switch between different filter shapes using MIDI notes. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I'm gonna go down here and turn MIDI switch on. What that allows me to do is save this whole shape I've created in one of these boxes. So I'll just hit this save button. And once that's saved, I can start creating a totally new filter shape. And once I'm finished tweaking that, I can save that one in the next box. So notice how the first box down there has a C sharp in it and the next box has a D in it. So let's go back to our MIDI file for a second. This is the reason that every note I put in here was a C. What I've done allows me to use the notes above the C to trigger different filter shapes. So in the beginning, I'm gonna go with the first filter shape, which is a C sharp. And then this third note right here, I want to be that longer filter shape. So I'm gonna put that as a D and then back to C sharp for the rest of the notes. So if I open the plugin back up, here's what it looks like now. 
notes, but I can use those MIDI notes to switch to whatever shape of filter I want whenever I want. So after messing around a little bit more, I landed on three different filter shapes to use. So I'm just adding a lot more variation and movement and making it all more interesting. And that one longer chord, this third one right here, I really wanted to differentiate from the rest. So that's when I added in this phaser effect. Since all these plugins are time-based, I can just select the length of my loop. In this case, it's one bar. And if I want to, I can just add an effect for one chord or one note. So that's what I've done here. I'll make it more drastic so you can really hear the difference. But in this case, I obviously wanted to be more subtle than that, so I'll just bring it back down. Just another way to add some more movement and variation. And at the end of the drop, you guys probably all heard this crazy transition effect that I played at the beginning of the video. Well, that's all within the same plugin too. If I open it back up in that section, I'm automating some pan, so it's moving back and forth between the left and right ears. And I'm automating the volume, so it's a little choppy. Then I'm adding this bit crusher on there. So I think that's a creative way to do a transition instead of just using like a white noise sweep or something basic like that. I mean, it's pretty insane that I can do all of this within one plugin. I haven't even touched another plugin the entire video. And every one of these effects is multiband. So you can just affect one little frequency range using each effect. I think I'm really just scratching the surface of how crazy you can get with this thing. So I've been showing you some advanced features, but at its core, this plugin started as a volume shaper, and I do still need to sidechain these chords to the kick. So I'm gonna open up a new instance of ShaperBox 3, and this time I'm gonna go to volume, and I'm gonna dial in a certain sidechain shape that I want. So I'll start with this preset and just tweak it a little bit. So I'm gonna take the mix of that down a little bit, and then I'm gonna copy this wave, and open up a low band. So everything under like 150 hertz is gonna be affected a little differently than everything above 150 hertz. I'm gonna change the slope to 12, and then let's make the mix 100% for the very low end. And for the mid range and above, it's gonna be at 70%. So it's side chaining a little less for the high frequencies. I also need to change the length to a quarter note for this side chain. But what's new in this version is you can side chain directly to an audio signal. So I'm gonna put it in audio mode, and select external signal right here. Then up here in the sidechain window, I'm just gonna go down and select my kick. And that's how easy it is to sidechain directly to my kick. Now this is a four on the floor house track, so it would actually be no different if I just hit sync. But if you have anything other than a four on the floor pattern like this, the plugin is still responding to all those different kicks. I've never seen this caliber of a volume shaping plugin that gives you so much control, but makes it so easy to sidechain to an audio signal. So I feel like the possibilities for what you can do with this thing are pretty endless. If you're interested, you can check out the plugin in the link down below. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.